great to welcome you this morning, those of you that are joining us online. We're so glad that you've paused on this Sunday morning. Or maybe you're watching at a different time, but whenever you're watching, that you've paused to join with us here. There's quite a few of us here in the room. Can we have a little welcome from everyone? It's good. Still a little bit quiet. I think you could have gone louder. More than everyone? Thank you, thank you, thank you. There's nothing better than standing here looking out on many faces. Having spent so many months just looking at a camera and going, hello. <laughs> to be able to see faces in the room is a beautiful thing. And, and this is church, right? This is church that we gather together. We need one another. Isn't that true? Come on. So this morning, my heart is full as we gather together. And, and we want you to join us from your home as well. Join us. We're here to worship Jesus. I'm going to just hand straight over to Ian now. I'll say a few more things in a moment, but I want us just to begin right away by declaring God and his greatness, his majesty, his beauty. Would you stand with me, those of you that are in the room, and we're going to just declare that everything about God is indescribable, is incredible. There are no words in our English language to describe the greatness and the majesty and the wonder of who God is. Do you find yourself like me? Your words just come to an end. You can't describe, but your spirit is stirred. There's something in your spirit. Come on, let's just begin to worship right now. Let's just begin to worship. If you feel at ease, lift your hands this morning. Honour Jesus. Surrender to him. Thanks, Ian. Indescribable. Uncontainable, you place the stars in the sky and you know them by name. You are amazing, God. You're all powerful, untamable. Lord, struck we fall to our knees as we humbly proclaim. You are amazing. God, indescribable, uncontainable, you place the stars in the sky and you know them by name, you are amazing God, you're all powerful, you're untamable, lost struck, we fall to our knees as we humbly proclaim, you are amazing God. Oh, sing again, indescribable. You're indescribable, uncontainable, you place the stars in the sky and you know them by name, you are amazing. God. You're all powerful, you're unsavable, Lord struck we fall to our knees as we humbly proclaim, you are amazing God. We comparable. Come on. You're unchangeable. You see the depths of my heart and you love me the same. You are amazing, God. You are You're incomparable. You're unchangeable. You see the depths of my heart and you love me the same. You are amazing. God. Isn't that a beautiful line? You see the depths of my heart. And you love me the same. Remain standing, if you will, because we're going to return to this song, continue worshiping. But I want to read just a couple of verses from Psalm 27. And this is what David says One thing. Do you say those words with me? One thing. One thing I ask of the Lord, the thing I seek most, is to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, 
delighting in the Lord's perfections. Isn't that a beautiful word, delighting? So we were praying just a few moments ago, the team of us up here, you might have seen us, Steve just brought a word and he just said, you know, God delights in us. <laughs> Won't surprise you to know, immediately an old song came to my mind. <sighs> and it literally finishes with this line. Of all the things God I'm most delighted in is that you delight in me. He delights in you this morning. You're the apple of his eye. He adores you. He delights in you. He can't get enough of you. Oh, let that thought just sink in. He can't get enough of you this morning. And here's the thing. David, out of that revelation, says, all I want to do is delight on you, God. I want to be in your house, meditating on you, delighting in you. For he will conceal me there when troubles come. He will hide me in his sanctuary. He will place me out of reach on a high rock. Come on, this is what God does. This is my story. This is my song. I was listening to a message in the week. I, I tend to listen to two or three messages most weeks from various places. And I listened to one this week. And he was talking about from from this psalm actually but the fact that our gaze is towards heaven do you remember that other song we used to sing many years ago when I look into your loveliness when I gaze into your holiness remember that one when all things that surround me become shadows in the light of you and and and, and this particular preacher she was saying that it's been proved that there's five levels of eye contact and this fascinated me, and, and, and I'm not going to tell you them all. I can't even remember them, and I didn't write them down. But what I do know is that the first one is just the, the kind of the glance that you do, and you know you don't know the person. It's a stranger. It's a glance, and then it goes through to where you the double glance. So somebody catches your eye, and then you're and the five levels of contact. Uh, it talks about that kind of awkward moment where you've caught somebody's eye, you don't know what to do. You know when you're in a lift or you're in the toilet, or you know you know that awkward, and you don't know where to look. At. But here's the thing: the five levels of eye contact finish with the gaze and it talks there's this particular lady that was preaching she talked about how the strength of, of when you're in relationship with someone and and it's not just a glance it's not there's not that awkwardness but you're able to look them in the eye and, and you hold the look and the eyes tell you so much about that person and you look them in the eye and there's a strength in that and here's what I want to tell you this morning you've got God's eye this morning He's looking at you, straight on, straight on. His gaze is towards you. Isn't that wonderful? His gaze is towards you. And so this is my question. Would you fix your gaze on him today? Can we look up? Can we fix our gaze on him? Fix your gaze. Hebrews talks about running our race with our eyes fixed on him. To me, this is what worship is. These beautiful musicians and singers are leading us in songs that have been written to help us fix our gaze. Would you allow me to pray for you? Maybe this morning, just in this atmosphere, you might just even just want to lift your hands and just respond to what I've just said. I wonder where you're at in those five levels of eye contact. I wonder if you and God, you're just at the glance. You're just glancing at him. There's a bit of curiosity going on and you're just glancing. I wonder if you're at the slightly awkward stage. He's caught your eye, and, but, but you, you're just looking away. Can I tell you that that stage as well is often connected to our shame? You know, when you're feeling shame, you can't look somebody in the eye. Isn't that true? When you feel like you're not worthy, when you feel like you're not good enough, we don't want to hold somebody's eye contact in that moment. Even those we love the most, we can't look them in the eye. But here's the thing. God never takes his eye off you. He never takes his eye off you. This morning, I want to challenge us all to never take our eyes off him. Keep your eye on him. Keep your eye on him. So today in this place, Holy Spirit, I want to release an ability in this place today, a freedom to fix our eyes on you. I want to release a freedom the things that would distract our attention and cause our eyes and our gaze to be elsewhere. I 
come against anything that would stop it being fixed on you. And I pray right now in Jesus' name for a freedom in this place for those watching online that we fix our gaze towards you, knowing that your gaze is on us. Come on, church, let's worship. Let's just worship him. Let's fix our gaze on him. Let's hold our eyes. Let's hold our eyes. Let's let our eyes love him today. And his eyes love us. Thanks, Ian. Indescribable, indescribable, you're uncontainable. You place the stars in the sky and you call them by name. You are amazing, God. You're all powerful, you're untamable. Lost up, we fall to our knees as we humbly. Proclaim, you are amazing, God. Incomparable, you're incomparable, you're unchangeable. You see the depths of my heart, and you love me the same. You are amazing, God. You're incomparable. You're unchangeable, you see the depths of my heart and you love me the same. You are amazing, God. You are amazing, God. You're creator of heaven and earth. Lord, there is no one like you. There is no one beside you. King of kings and Lord of lords. King of kings and Lord of the blind there's no one like you none like you into the darkness you shine out of the ashes we rise there's no one like you there's none like you this our God greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, yes our God. This wall that you turned into wine. Open the eyes of the blind There's no one like you There's none like you Into the darkness you shine And out of the ashes we rise There's no one like you No one There's none like you Greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, it's our God, it's our God. Our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer. Awesome in power, our God, and our God. And if our God 
is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? If our God is with us, then what could stand against? Yes, our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is seen, awesome in power, our God.
Um, I was just getting those butterflies that you get when you know Jesus gives you something to share. So I was obedient and I've come up. <laughs> um, so I was just reading this. This It's not a it's passage from the Bible, um, but it's basically like a shortened down version of the story of Joshua when he marks around, marches around Jessica, Je- Jericho. So God instructed Joshua with an unusual strategy for the battle of Jericho. He told Joshua to have his army march around the city once a day for six straight days. While marching, the soldiers played their trumpets as the priests carried the Ark of the Covenant 
around the city of Jericho. On the seventh day, the Israelites marched around the walls of Jericho seven times. Joshua assured them that by God's order, everyone in the city must be slain except Rahab and her family. All items were to go to the Lord. At Joshua's order, the men produced a powerful roar and Jericho's walls miraculously fell down. The Israelite army raced in quickly, conquering the city, and as promised, only Rahab and her family were spared. When I was reading this just a second ago, I just was really struck by that word miraculous and just how miraculous God is. And just as we were singing those songs, I got a real sense of God's power and his majesty. And actually, how silly did Joshua feel walking around thinking, oh no, how, <laughs> what's going on here? <laughs> he had no idea what God was going to do. And then on that seventh day, God said, right, let out an almighty roar. And miraculously, the walls of Jericho were brought down. This week, I've, um, I've been preparing for a test for a very long time, for about a year and a half, to become a driving instructor. And um, I really got a real sense that God wanted me to move into this line of work like, last, like a year and a half ago. Me and Beck sat down, decided whether it's the right thing to do. You know, it means giving up. I was an assistant manager at Starbucks. I had a good job. I was moving up, I was going to become manager, but I just really felt that God needed me to do this. And I thought, no, I've got a family, I can't do that. I'm going to be losing money. <laughs> I can't do it. And um, I just kept on hearing God's voice throughout COVID, throughout all that, throughout everything that was going on. I had a breakdown and at the end of it, I just really felt like God was saying, go for it. I didn't think I could do it. There was no way I could do it. I wonder if that's how Joshua felt. Joshua felt, I can't do this. This isn't going to happen. This is a joke. <laughs> but no, God turned around and he made it for the good. And this week I passed my driving test to become an instructor. And it's just those little stories, those little moments where you get a glimpse and you think, God's real, God's there. You know, you see his Bible come to life. You see his passage, the word, come to life. You can read it. You can read it every day. And, you know, if you don't act on it, then nothing's going to happen. It's all just going to be history. It's all going to be words in a book. But actually, God wants us to turn it around. And he wants it to become now. It's not just stuff we read, we sing about. It's, it's real life. And sometimes it can become and feel a little bit obsolete, like not real. Like, I could easily turn around and say, no, I did that all by myself. I passed that test all by myself. But to be honest, I mean, I wouldn't have been able to do it without the strength of God. And um, actually, I was in the car, and at the end of the test, we were sat there, me and the instructor, and the instructor went, God was on your side today. And I was like, and he wasn't a Christian, he's not a Christian. And I was like, yeah, he is. <laughs> he really, really is. He is on my side. And... Yeah, I just felt like I needed to share this this morning just to show you God's power and his majesty. It is, it is alive today and it's still going and we sing about it and sometimes we can just sing and it doesn't really mean a lot, but actually these words, they mean something. God has a plan and for everybody, for each one of us. So yeah, go with it. <laughs> go with what you think God's saying, open some doors. You know, because he's saying it for a reason. And sometimes it means taking a bit of a step of faith. Joshua took a step of faith. You know, there's loads of people in this room that I know that have taken that step of faith and it's turned out amazing. So go for it. Let's sing about God's majesty and his power and let's just roar. Let's bring down the, the walls of Jericho. <laughs>
Just this part again. All my life you've been faithful, and uh, and um, Ian, we had a little moment, didn't we? Just uh, Ian suddenly pulled back from the microphone in that song, and we could just hear everyone's voices. Do you know how precious it still is to hear one another sing? It's just me that's feeling that. This song is so precious. This song is a testimony, isn't it? Yeah? yeah, that's what this song is. It's a testimony. Oh my days! I have the privilege of standing here and looking at so many of you, and. And I have the privilege of knowing so many of your stories. This is your testimony. And, uh, and, and in a moment, we're going to hear testimony of what God's been doing in our young people. And I, oh, do you know, from generation to generation to generation to generation to generation, shall I go on to generation to generation to generation, the Lord is faithful. And so I'm looking at you, young people, this morning. You're thrilling my heart. Because I'm telling you, you're looking at an old girl here who knows that God has been faithful. Turn around, look at some of these oldies. Come on, you don't mind me saying that, do you? I'm pointing to Celia, she doesn't mind. Look around. I want to tell you guys, if God did it for us, and he's still doing it for us, he's going to do it for you. Do you hear me? So here's the deal. One day, I'm going to be in my 80s. And one day, you're going to be up here. And one day, you're going to be saying... Do you know what? That old girl there, she proved it. <laughs> Come on, all my life, just our voices. All my life, you've been faithful. Let's sing. And all my life, you have been One more time, all my life. Let's go loud. room no Sam who was just up here sharing Sam thank you for sharing your testimony your story and encouraging us and Sam you were just these guys age right when you started coming to camp camp's been running for 17 years and and so I just want to say that because this is such a generational thing let's keep passing the baton on MJ come and share with us are we good good morning everyone um yeah we just wanted to take a moment this morning to just um just share a little bit about camp over the last couple of Sundays. We've been praying for the core team. We've been praying for the kids and the young people. Um, um, it's always good as church. You know, you've been praying. And the first thing I want to say is thank you. Because um, it, it's part 
of these children and young people's journey, you as church getting alongside and praying for them. And we had our children at the beginning of the week, so we went off on Sunday afternoon, came back Wednesday, and then the youth Wednesday came back yesterday. They might still all be looking a bit bleary-eyed, I think, maybe this morning. Um, but I just wanted to quickly just share a bit about the kids. Um, we had nine children, and um, the first thing I want to share with you is just what a privilege um, being a leader is at something like this. And, you know, after the last couple of years, we've all experienced things that haven't been able to happen, haven't we? It's been two years of, yeah, disappointments, lets downs, um, restrictions, um, things that we've not been able to do. And I'd like to share with you what a delight camp was. I know it wasn't easy getting to the point of camp. It wasn't easy for the core team, even as us as leaders. It wasn't easy getting to that point after the last two years. But I know when I was there, During those few days, I just stood there and knew, wow, God, this is worth it. It was worth the hard work from all the core team that put it in, us as leaders. It was worth you as parents making the step to go, I'm going to send my children away. Um, It was a real honor. And, you know, such a moment of investment. You know, it was amazing to just stand there with these children in meetings, worshiping God, seeing them respond to God, saying yes to Jesus Um, hearing them talk about what God was doing in their lives. You know, that is so valuable. (laughs) And um, I suppose I want to encourage you as church that we invest. It doesn't matter what age, no matter what age. The kids are young, old, whatever they are. It is worth investing in these young people because God wants to speak to them as much as he wants to speak to us. Sometimes I think he speaks to them more. <laughs> I think, you know, we need to listen to our children, young people, and hear what God is saying to them. So just, it was just amazing. It was brilliant to take these kids away. A real privilege and a real honor as a leader that I get to do that with these kids. And um, we had lots of fun, um, lots of sweets, and more sweets and more sweets, and I think some more sweets. You know, the children would turn up at meal times going, I've got some sweets. And I'm like, no, go take them back. We're having dinner. Um, so, but it was good. And I actually just asked the kids if they could sum up camp in one word. Okay, so I've got a little list of words that the children that we took away, they summed up camp this way. We had fun, exciting, amazing, extraordinary, ants. Now, that's an interesting one. You might be going, why on earth ants? We did not have an invasion of ants. Um, A couple of the boys had discovered at the bottom of the field a big ants' nest. They were quite fixated with this ants' nest, so it was the topic of conversation every mealtime. They were feeding it lollies and sweets and um, pineapple and tomato and giving us updates on them. So they were quite fixated with the ants, which was quite amusing. Um, We have yummy, of course. The food was delicious. Um, Awesome. And I like this last one as well. Wow. Isn't that good? These are the children and their responses. That they go to somewhere like camp and they come back just going, wow. (laughs) Isn't that good? So thank you for praying. Thank you for supporting these kids. Can I encourage you, like, over these coming weeks, chat to the children that went to camp and say, you know, um, what did you get up to? What did you do? What was it like? What did God speak to you? And um, find out and keep praying for them as well Um, because that's really important. So I'm going to hand over to Amy. Amy's going to come and talk a little bit more about youth, and then I think we've got some others as well from youth that are going to share. So, Amy. Hello. Um, Youth was amazing too. I was able to be at both Kids Week and Youth Week. Um, Bubbles. Um, And I, I just loved seeing everyone praying. That was what I really loved. I loved praying over the kids. I loved all of us youth being able to pray over each other. And it was also really cool because we got to really bond. And I feel like that was something that obviously we haven't been able to do over this year. We've also, we've lost a lot of connection over this past, how long it's been. And we've been able to really connect as a group, I think. And that's been really, really amazing. Um, And yeah, I just think we've all been really hearing from God. And like Sam said earlier, God is really real. And we've really seen that God is so real. And there's been so many moments people have been able to... um, hear from God, people have come to God, people have um, given their life to God, people have heard from the Holy Spirit and have been given the gift of the Holy Spirit and it's just been really amazing. Um, We have a few youth to come up, so I think James and Harry, 
they're going to come up and share a little bit. If any of the other youth would like to come, they can. They might not, a little bit like notice. But, um, yeah. My experience as youth was um, very interesting. I was the only person who was there for the first time, so it's all very new, very nerve-wracking. But um, it was it was kind of a mix. Really. It was a mix of excitement, but it also really helped me connect with God as well. And it was just it was really interesting. That's really yeah. That's so so good. We've all just had an amazing time at camp. Um, one last thing I just wanted to say is, I've heard this verse a couple of times over Kids Week and the Youth Bubble, um, and I just thought it was really good to share. It's a very well-known one. It's Jeremiah 29, verse 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. And I think that's very key for us young people as well, because we've obviously had this year of not knowing what to do, and some people's future, they're not knowing what's going on with that. And it's been really key to have that verse that he knows the plans that he's got for us. And yeah, um, I'm just going to pray for us all um, because of this amazing last week we've had. Um, God, I thank you for this past week. I thank you for all these young people, these kids and these youth that have just had to an amazing experience at camp, have really felt you, have really had moments with you, and that they'll never forget, and there'll be big memories for them. I pray that it continues, and that us youth continue to bond, and they continue to hear from you, and just learn and grow in their relationship with you. And I pray for us all um, going into this next week. Amen. Wow. Are you a bit proud of these guys? Come on, just, just a little bit. Oh, man. Aren't we blessed in this church to have young people that we can pray over? Let's keep doing that, church. Let's keep praying over our young people. And, um, yeah, amen to what you just prayed, Amy. Church, come on, I'm being serious now. Let's, let's not forget, let's not neglect praying for these young people because... You know, um, they can have an experience at camp. And, uh, oh, don't we know, in our own lives, the enemy loves to come and just steal away the very thing that God's deposited there. So, church, let's be praying. Guys, we're praying for you. We're really praying for you. We're going to um, remember Jesus' death and his resurrection right now. We call this communion, breaking bread. I'm going to ask one favour, and it's that we um, wait before we start opening. <laughs> I, I'm... I just like us to open them all together. Gareth commented a few weeks ago that he likes the noise. The noise drives me insane. That shows how different we both are, okay? But bear with, bear with. What I do agree with him on is I like the sound. What he was saying is the sound that we're all doing it together. Because at the moment, we still aren't able to really break bread as we would. And, um, but I want us to make that sound together. So if you can just be patient and just wait till you rip. Okay, if you don't know what I'm talking about, are you with me on that, Sean? Thank you. I haven't got one. MJ, can you chuck me one? Thank you. She, go, she, did, she didn't want to touch. She didn't want to throw on me. She didn't, touch, she didn't trust my catching skills. Thank you, Mary Jane, for the vote of confidence. Um, so listen, if you haven't been here before, it's quite simple. You just open the top layer, but just wait a moment. Just wait. I want us to do this together. Um, see, Sam talked to us about when they marched around Jericho. And then what happened? All together they gave out a... Yeah. yeah. Somehow I just want this morning the sound of us ripping this paper. It's noisy. And as I said, the noise gets on my nerves, actually. I don't like it very much. You didn't know that about me, did you? I get a little bit... Mm. If the curtains aren't straight, I can't cope. And if there's a noise, I can't cope. I'm a little bit odd. But I would love to hear the noise this morning of us together declaring this is what we're confident in. My hope is built on Jesus Christ and nothing else. 
So when I eat this little wafer in a minute and drink this juice, my declaration is I'm lost without him, but he has found me. I once was blind, but now I see. Is this your story? Jesus Christ has saved me. He has changed me. You're not looking at someone who's got it all together. You're looking at someone who has not got it all together. That's why I need Jesus. What about you? What about you? You feeling lost this morning? You struggling? Is your heart aching? Is your head all over the place? There is only one answer, and his name is Jesus. And that's not a cliche, it's not a throwaway statement, it's not some super spiritual thing. It is the truth, it is the truth. And I want to tell you with as much passion as I have, if you have not got Jesus, you are lost. If you haven't got Jesus, you're lost. But I want to tell you, you can have Jesus right now in this moment. Allow me to pray for you before we make a noise. Be patient. You're all on edge, I know. Be patient. Come on, hold this up with me, would you? Would you hold it in the air? At home, I don't know what you've got at home. Not a noisy thing like this, but whatever you've got. Maybe you've only got a biscuit in your hand. Hold that biscuit up by faith and say, Lord Jesus, I am dependent on you. You're my saviour. You're my king. You're my lord. You're my friend. You're my father. Oh, Jesus, if it wasn't for the cross, I would be lost. But you have made a way for me to know you. And this morning, by faith, we do this together with one heart, with one mind. Our declaration is Jesus Christ and him alone. We stand on him. We stand on him. We eat of his body and we drink of his blood. We partake in this together, knowing that Jesus said that you are forgiven and you are clean if you come to him. Come on, let's make a noise. Are you ready? Three, two, one. Let's go for it. Be as noisy as you like. Let's make it a roar. I can't even do it, but that's how humbly I am this morning. Here we go. Come on. Let's eat together. You were a bit behind, Sean. It's all right. It's all right. Hey. Do you know you can look at one another while you do this? It might be an awkward glance, or it might be a stare, or <laughs> we do it together. We do it together. You're ready for the next bit now. I don't think the next bit's as noisy. The first bit's the noisiest, isn't it? Sorry, those of you at home, we're just having a little conversation in the room, me and Sean, but that's just the way we roll, really, isn't it, here? Come on, Harbour Church, let's drink by faith his blood for us. Lord Jesus, we thank you that your blood was shed for us for the forgiveness of sins. We are forgiven when we put our trust in you. Today we confess our need of you. We confess our sins. We ask you to forgive us. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's drink. Ian, I haven't asked for this, so forgive me, but can we just sing Amazing Grace? Just the first verse. It can just be Ian, don't worry, all the other musicians. I would just do it a cappella, but you don't really want my voice, so let's let Ian lead it. Let's just, just where we're sitting, let's just sing Amazing Grace, shall we? How sweet the sound, saved a wretch like me. grace that brought me, t'was grace that brought 
I love this line. Come on, sing it by faith. How precious did that grace appear. The Through many dangers, toils and snares. Yeah, come on. I have already come. Come on, let's declare this. It's your grace. It's brought me safe this far. And grace will lead me home. Ellis is our preacher this morning. Come on, Ellis, up you come. Come on. Ellis said to me last night, he said, I've, I've never preached live before. So he's, he's at Bible College, those of you who don't know, he's at Regent's Bible College. And, um, and he's done a lot of preaching to camera. So he's used to preaching to a camera, he's not used to preaching to people, faces. So, uh, so let's cheer him on this morning, yeah? And, um, and just believe that God's going to speak through him this morning. That's all right, don't worry, you're a bit taller. You're the tallest in our family. We're all short, aren't we? That doesn't say much at all. <laughs> Hello. Hope everyone's all right this morning. Let me just find where I am. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I've got the privilege of talking to you today, but I'm sorry, I, I'm not very good at speaking in front of people, so if I'm a bit nervous, hopefully I'll get over it after a couple of words. Um, <laughs> um, so today I want to try and um, get you to think about some questions that I don't think often cross our minds, but have really challenged me in the last probably six months or so. And those questions are... What happens when the good things get in the way? Can we have too much of a good thing? And maybe the most challenging of them, can God's gifts to us get in the way of our relationship with God? Now, I know that sounds strange, but let me explain myself. Um, we often talk about the bad things, the obvious sinful things that we do, um, getting in between us and God. Um, you know, and those obviously do get in between us and God. I'm not saying they don't at all. They, they clearly do. But what about the things that we see in our lives as positives? Can they get between us and God? The things that have been good for us. And I want to unpack that idea a little bit. So if you've got a Bible um, or a phone or whatever, um, if you could turn with me to Numbers 21 verses 4 to 9. That would be amazing. It should be on the screen as well. Numbers 21, 4 to 9. So, this is uh, titled The Bronze Snake. So that's fun. Um, then the people of Israel set out from Mount Hor, taking the road to the Red Sea um, to go around the land of Edom. But the people grew impatient with the long journey, and they began to speak against God and Moses. 
Why have you brought us out of, G- out of Egypt to die here in the wilderness, they complained. There's nothing to eat here, nothing to drink, and we hate this horrible manna. So the Lord sent poisonous snakes among the people, and many were bitten and died. Then the people came to Moses and cried out, We have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray that the Lord will take away the snakes. So Moses prayed for the people. Then the Lord told him, Make a replica of of a poisonous snake and attach it to a pole. All who are bitten will live if they simply look at it. So Moses made a snake out of bronze and attached it to a pole. Then anyone who was bitten by a snake could look at the bronze snake and be healed. So, there's that. I love that story. It's really weird. Um, <laughs> but it's, it's good. Um, so, yeah, I want to focus on this bronze serpent. Um, clearly, in this story here, the bronze serpent's a good thing. It's a positive thing. It's a gift from God. Um, and it's a symbol of God's healing power, but I think more importantly, a symbol of repentance towards God. The people ask for their sorry, they ask for, for forgiveness, essentially, and that's what God gives them. Um, and yeah, so the people literally wanted to repent for what they'd done, and that's what God gave to them. Um, the serpent is unquestionably a good thing for Israel. Um, in the, at this moment in time, it's a gift from God, and it's, it's good, and it protected them and healed them. So, moving on a few hundred years. Um, <laughs> again, if you've got your Bibles, can you turn to 2 Kings 18, verses 3 and 4. So here we have just a little bit of background. Hezekiah has just become the king of Judah. Um, he's a good bloke. Um, <laughs> And the, those before him may be less so. Um, and he's come along and he's basically starting off his rule by getting rid of the things that have gone wrong and the things that have been corrupted. So that's what we read about here. Let me just find it. Sorry. <laughs> he did what was pleasing in the Lord's sight, just as his ancestor David had done. He removed the pagan shrines, smashed the sacred pillars, and cut down the Asherah poles. He broke up the bronze serpent that Moses had made, because the people of Israel had been offering sacrifices to it. The bronze serpent was called the Nehushtan. <laughs> Love a bit of biblical pronunciation. <laughs> so, this is the same bronze serpent. It's the same positive image that we read about in Numbers. Um, It's the same good thing. That thing wasn't a bad thing in the first place. But it's it's been held onto all this time and for completely the wrong reasons. Its importance has been inflated to the point where it's worshipped instead of just seen as a gift from God. It's worshipped alongside God in the temple um, like you read about this sort of snake cult appearing around it. Um, but it was a gift from God, and that gift from God has been idolized instead of God being worshipped. We often talk about the classically bad things when we're talking about idolatry. We think about money and, and in our modern world, social media and celebrity, and we do often put those things before God and and those are very much, you know, they're problematic in that sense. But it's rare that we look at the things that have been good for us. In some instances, like Israel here, um, God has given us things, given us gifts, given us good things. There are good things in our life that we've then put before God and we've put in the way of God. So what are some, I guess, examples? Um, What are things in your life that might be in your life? Obviously, I don't know every individual here, and I don't know the specifics of your life. But here's some stuff I picked out that I know I've I've maybe struggled with, and I think a lot of people have as well. So so, um, 
Yeah, things like, you know, what, what have we turned into idols that could be good? First one here, I put other Christians. You know, or sometimes Christian celebrity. Sometimes we focus on other Christians more than we actually focus on God. Whether it's a pastor or a leader, a Christian friend or a famous Christian, you know the sort. We, we idolize them, we listen to them more than we read the Bible and listen to God. Um, but those things, like with everything I read here, can be really positive for your relationship with God and can be really helpful. But we need to keep that in check. Uh, what about knowledge? Um, specifically for me at least, this was one that I've struggled with. Um, being a theology student, I always want to learn more about God. And that is really good and really important. But there is a level to which you need to work out, are you learning that for you, for your selfish desires of being the smartest person in the room? Or are you doing that in pursuit of God? Again, none of these things are bad. That's the point. That's the whole point is that these are good things. We just need to keep them in check because anything coming in front of God is idolatry. Are you making an idol of politics? Christians so often have good intentions of being political or basing our politics off the Bible, all of that sort of thing. But it's so... <laughs> It's so easy to get sucked into it in an unhealthy way where our, our politics for Jesus become more important than Jesus. Family and relationships. This is a difficult one to hear, I know, but we genuinely need to be careful that our relationships with our friends and family don't become more important to us than our relationship with God. I'm not saying don't love them, obviously, <laughs> but there is a level of which we can make an idol of the people closest to us. And that isn't good. Um, God must be our number one priority. Or, in the context of what's written here in Two Kings, is it a bit more literal? Have, the, have you directly inflated the gifts that God has given you to a point where you're worshipping those gifts um, or worshipping yourself through them instead of God. Um, if those gifts from God are primarily serving your own selfish desires rather than the desires of God, that needs to be addressed. If you're, say, a brilliant musician, um, does leading worship or being in the worship team mean more, than you, more to you than actually worshipping God? If you have a prophetic gifting, are you using it in your own self-interest or to make yourself look holy? Or is it about God? If you're, a, if you're a brilliant speaker, do you care more about speaking the word of God or people complimenting you afterwards? If you go on with examples like that, obviously, you know, there's lots of, we all have different giftings, we all have different things that God's given to us. And those are great things, and they're brilliant. But we just need to be careful sometimes. Um, <laughs> I think it's important that we constantly evaluate our lives and work out whether the things we are doing are, number one, becoming more important than God, and aren't becoming more important than God, sorry. And number two aren't taking away focus from God and onto ourselves, even if, you know, unintentional. That's still a, a, something we need to be careful of. Whatever it is, if something seems good on the outside but is interfering with your relationship with God or the people around you's relationship with God, um, something probably needs to be done about it. So, what can we do about it? Um, well, obviously, in the most extreme example, like Hezekiah here in Two Kings, we could destroy it, get rid of it. Now, I'm not saying the example of like your family and friends, please don't, don't destroy them. Um, <laughs> but some things, like this bronze serpent, are good for a season, 
But when they're no longer helpful and when God's no longer using them, um, they can become corrupted and twisted. Quite simply, it might just be that that thing needs to be dropped. Left in the past is something that was good but is no longer helpful for your life. Another option is change it. Some things were good but have become too important and got in the way. That doesn't mean they can't be good again. We approach things with an understanding that we serve God and only God. Not ourselves, not other people. Then those things can be good again if we do that. It may be the case of reorientating the way you think. Um, Think about that thing so it no longer gets in the way of your relationship with God. And third, I guess kind of a middle ground between those two. Sometimes there's things that are important to us, that are too important to us, but we can't let go of permanently. I just want to encourage you, maybe it's time to give that a break. That doesn't mean never come back to it. That doesn't mean that that, that is bad forever and you need to destroy it like, like Hezekiah. But if something in your life is having a, isn't positive right now, you can step back from that. And you can come back to that later. That's fine. But sometimes stepping back for a, for a period of time or a season in your life is, is a good thing. So yeah, sort of as, as I wrap up a bit. Um, I just want to challenge us as we go into this week to have a look at ourselves and work out if we're idolizing things. Um, if things are becoming more important and getting in the way of our relationship with God. Uh, I want to encourage you all to pray about things and work out if they're getting in the way. I'm not here trying to tell you to drop everything good in your life because that would be a bad idea. <laughs> but, um, but I want to encourage you to regularly assess the things that you might not normally assess. Um, and, you know, make sure you're always putting God at the center of your life rather than other things. So, yeah, thank you. Just, just pray for us as we finish. Father God, I want to thank you for your power and your love and your control and the fact that you are the creator of this universe, of the universe. And, um, and you are number one. And I just want to pray that as, as we go away from today, we can remember that, take it in, and make sure that um, where appropriate we are removing things, changing things, so that you are the number one priority in our lives and we're not idolizing anything above you. Because you are the thing that we should worship and nothing else. I just want to pray as we leave today, we can really take that in. And have a wonderful week. Amen. Yeah, come on, you can clap and encourage Ellis. That was, that was amazing. <laughs> Wow. Thank you, Alice. Yeah. That wasn't the most comfortable message, was it? So, Ellis, I want to tell you this. As somebody who likes to hear lots of our men's, I sat this morning realising that sometimes silence, Gareth, if you're watching, you'll be going at long last, she's realising it. <laughs> sometimes silence is the very thing we need because the message just needs to land. Can't believe I'm confessing that. Holy Spirit, let it land and let it do its work. Thank you, Ellis, for having courage to preach a message that isn't the most comfortable, but we need to hear it, because anything that gets in the way of us and God, we're on dangerous ground, right? So let's keep check. I like the way Ellis kept saying that. Let's just keep a check. Let's keep a check. Keep a check on ourselves. Let's keep a check on one another, right? Let's keep a check so that we're we're just keeping our eyes on Jesus. Should we stand together again? And and we're going to sing a great song in response to that that just declares the the lordship of Jesus. And um, so let's just use this song as a response. Thank you, Ian. A song that just honors and declares that Jesus is king.
presence doesn't his presence just recenter us yeah isn't that what happens as we worship him as we fix our gaze on him it doesn't have to end now I want to encourage you this week fix your gaze on him I don't know how you do that for me it means listening to a lot of worship songs at home I play worship songs I have to do that to fix my gaze on him I don't know what works for you maybe it's out walking in creation Whatever it is, fix your gaze. Fix your gaze. Intentionally fix your gaze. Because there is a name above every other name. Let's just sing that again. All our worship. Come on, just one more time. All our worship. And all our worship will belong to you forever. Oh, 
all of it. Holy, holy, for all eternity. There is a name. There is a name that reigns above all others. Jesus Christ, the King above all kings. Jesus Christ. Thank you, God, our Father. Thank you, Jesus, our friend, our Saviour. Thank you, Holy Spirit, our comforter, our counsellor, the one who comes alongside. We thank you. We honour you today. Amen. Amen. Do you know, I've just got to comment on it. Little Ben just running up here towards his dad. If that's not a picture of what we need to do this week, run to your father. Okay? When you're not sure what's going on, when you all feel a bit out of sorts this week, run to your dad. Run to your father. Go as fast as you can. (laughs) Go as fast as you can, Bill says at 92. Run as fast as you can. I love that. Unashamedly, Ben just runs up here. And I think that somebody needs to take that home with them today. Run run to dad. Yeah? Because you're the safest in his arms and it's all fine. We're so glad you've joined us at home. We're so glad that you've been part of the service here. Maybe you want to give. Giving is so important to the life of a follower of Jesus. Um, And I mean that because the Bible says where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. And so the two are connected. It's so connected. So we want to take this moment to encourage you that you can give online. Those of you in the room, the same. Um, you can you can give online, and many of you are doing that. But I want to pause in this moment and just and just remind us of that. You know, I think as Ellis has been talking this morning, that comes into it. Let's keep our heart right. Let's keep our heart aligned. And so often, uh, our, our treasure and our heart they're connected. So let's keep our eyes on Jesus and honour Him with our with our giving. And of course, that's not just our money. It's our time. It's our whole being. It's all of us but it is our finance as well. So bless you for giving your finances. And um, on the screen now is all the information to help you do that and you can continue to to give online. And and maybe you're in the room and you do give online and you're a taxpayer. Well, we would love to be able to get some some gift aid from you and you can speak to our finance team about that. Uh, That's either Josh Cottenham or Muriel who's here or Sam who's here and, and they can tell you more about that. That's for those of you online and those of you in the room as well. We're so glad that you've been here today. Come on, should we give a cheer again? Like we started off with a cheer and a clap. So good we've been here. Um, Those of you in the room, um, we have tea and coffee and biscuits in the marquee, which is great. The sun is shining. And we're just enjoying these summer Sundays where we can reconnect again, learn to talk together, just just be together. So don't dash off. Let's hang around. Let's enjoy a cup of tea or coffee. And let's have some great conversation. but in terms of um, those of you that are, that are still on the tables and just social distancing, you'll be told where you can go. So those of us that are in the middle, can we just still, just, just for these few moments, let's still be respectful. Let's not be charging around in here like loonies. Let's, not, um, let's kind of stay calm um, and let's just be respectful of people still. And obviously let's be wearing our masks in the building and that would be great. God bless you. Thank you for joining us online. We'll see you next week. <laughs>